the way of Will John. So, you know, I think uh, a really good thing to just have in mind as a general piece of education is the cave allegory. Plato's cave allegory that Socrates is explaining. Yeah. Tell it, please. Yeah, so yeah. this is the most famous way that Socrates described his theory of the absolute ideas, or at least that Plato depicted him doing that. So Socrates says, imagine someone at birth taken down into a subterranean cave, an underground cave, and then they're shackled head to foot so they can't move their heads and see the people lined up next to them on either side. All they can do is look at the back of the cave. Now behind them, above the entrance to the cave, is a brilliant fire. And between the fire and the prisoners is a barrier that goes up halfway to the height of the cave. And behind that barrier, guards walk. And they hold up on sticks silhouettes, puppets, which are facsimiles of natural objects outside, like a rabbit or a tree. And they walk back and forth behind this barrier. So their shadow is not cast on the wall in the back of the cave but the shadows of the puppets are. And the shadows of the prisoners are also cast on the back of the cave. So all they can see is their own shadows, their neighbor's shadows, and the shadows of the puppets. They can hear uh, people walking behind them, and they hear it bounce off the wall, so they can hear the echoes of things behind them, and they can see the shadows of things behind them, but they think everything in reality is just the shadows and the sounds that they hear echoing off that. So then somebody comes down from, oh yeah, and they pride themselves on predicting which shadow will come in which sequence. And that is, whoever can do that the best is the most brilliant and respected by all the other prisoners. <laughs> that was a, probably an allusion to people studying astronomy at the time. So someone comes out from the upper world down into the cave, breaks the shackles, turns the person around, and says, behold, this is what you think, you're, these are the shadows that you're looking at, these are the source of the shadows, but it, the fire is so bright it blinds the prisoner's eyes, and now he can't see anything. And he thinks this person's driven him insane. And then the person from outside drags him up the rough and steep ascent out to the outer world, and now the sunlight really blinds his eyes, and it's horribly painful, and he thinks he's totally gone insane. But then gradually at night, he can look around and see things. And in daytime, he can look in puddles of water and see reflections of things, including the sun. And eventually he can take a glimpse at the sun itself. And then he realizes, ah, this is the source of reality. In Socrates' worldview, the sun is the source of the earth and everything else. And everything down in that abominable cave, oh, what a nightmare that was. And then the person who released him said, okay, congratulations, isn't this wonderful? Isn't this freedom? So now go back in the cave and return the favor. So he goes back down into the cave and now his eyes have to readjust to the darkness and the people who can see the shadows think he's a fool because he can't even see the shadows anymore. But when he reacclimates to the darkness, then he can predict the shadows 10,000 times better than everyone else because he just looks behind him and he sees the guards lining up or queuing up and then he says, okay, here's what's going to happen. Rabbit, tree, tree, rabbit, uh, bush. And then lo and behold, boom. And everyone's amazed. But not everybody's amazed at first because he can't see those shadows. And they think, oh, this person's trying to blind me and make me insane. I'd rather kill this person than allow them to turn me into something as foolish as he is. And um, if they could get their hands on him, they would kill him. That's So that that's the cave allegory. Because Socrates was ultimately executed by the people of Athens whom he was trying to get out of the cave of shadows. So then Socrates says, okay, here's the allegory. As the shadows on the wall of the cave are, are there, they are what the three-dimensional objects that we see are. The visible sun, it's like the three-dimensional world we live in is a cave. The sun is the light, in the, is the fire in the cave, and the three-dimensional objects, including our own bodies, are the shadows on the wall of the cave. And if you study math in particular, so there's the playbook, but there's another side to it also. Then you can rotate the eye of the soul inward and perceive the absolute ideas of which these three-dimensional objects are just shadows. And the idea of the good is the spiritual sun, and it's the source of all of the other absolute ideas like tree and rabbit and justice and beauty. They're all condensed into one infinitely brilliant absolute idea of the good to see which makes you a just person in public and private life 